Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and KillerUniversity.com. In this video tutorial, what I want to do is show you how to set up a MySQL database using the cPanel interface. If you don't use cPanel and your web hosting comp company is who will decide whether or not you have cPanel, uh, although fortunately most of us do. Uh, you, the principles will work just as well, will work pretty much the same way with Plesk and uh, other uh, hosting C, uh, control panels that you may have. So here we go. So I've logged into a control panel for one of the killer sites. And so what you got to do is once you log in, is you scroll down and you want to look for your databases tab here. The uh, Databases tab contains everything you need to set up your MySQL database. So what I like to do is I, I like to go right into the MySQL database option here. So we click through. And as you can see, this environment here gives you uh, pretty much a breakdown of what your particular hosting account has in terms of databases. There are no databases associated with your account. So let's create one. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, we'll call it uh, products. Seems to be a common one. Now, because this is cPanel, what it does is, is that it, it appends to your database name, your account name, plus the underscore. So in this case, the account name is KillerJA. Your account may your account name will be whatever your account name happens to be. So let's just hit create databases. And now cPanel in the background is creating the database for us. This typically is pretty fast, but I guess the killer site server is uh, has a little bit of uh, traffic now, which uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you want to look at it, it's, uh, it's happening more often than not. So We'll just wait to see. So we see here that the cPanel interface added the database KillerJA underscore products right here. So let's uh, go back. And under our databases, you see that it's listed here. So we can delete the database. And of course, it tells us how many megabytes are applied to the database. Here's the thing, you have to now create a user to associate with the database. Now if we scroll down, I'm gonna have to minimize this window here. If we scroll down, you see that there are no current users. That's why this is blank. So we're gonna have to create a user first, right up here. MySQL users add new users. So we're just gonna keep the user killerja underscore killerja. This is, of course, again, the account name. You could give it any name you like, you know, called Stefan, you know, or whatever. But, uh, you know, I'll call it Stefan. And now the password, you can set it to whatever you like. So I'm just going to set it to something. And uh, the best password, of course, contains letters and numbers. And use something like an underscore or a dash at some point. So if your data, if your password is, for instance, I don't know, fish25 trout, you might have a dash in between fish and 25, or maybe have fish2-5 underscore trout, uh, maybe a capital letter here or there. Why? So that the database is much harder to break into. Anyway, um, and the password generator here is something you, that you can use where it would actually create a password for you. Um, and of course, right here, it gives you the strength of the password. So it's, it's a moderately strong password. These green check marks are pretty obvious. So let's just create the user. So now we have the user created. Uh, username is killerja underscore Stefan with a password of my dash password dash 32. So you might want to remember this. You can, you know, I, I just tend to cut 
cut and paste this, copy and paste this rather. So we go back. Now if you're asking yourself or saying to yourself that this process seems a little cumbering, you know, why not just create the user and password at the same time and the user and the database at the same time, etc. I, I, I tend to agree, but you gotta understand the user account is not necessarily associated with any particular database. Users exist within MySQL and they can be associated with one or many databases. Uh, they can be removed, they can be changed. So a user is not part of the database. The database is a separate thing. Uh, so you just then assign users to the particular database you want to assign them to. So we do that finally add user to database. So you select your user from the list. We only have one user. We only have one database. But you know, let's create another database just to make the point. Uh, we'll call it members. So we create the database. We see here that we've created a new database, added the database, killerja underscore members. So let's go back. So here we have two databases, the members database and the products database. And we have only one user. Let's create another user. We'll call the user products. Okay, product. So if we do this, username cannot be longer than seven characters. So we make it six. And we give it the database password of p 23 dash name p-23 name so you see the password strength is very strong we like that so let's create that user now this thing keeps on popping up this is my web browser saying hey do you want to remember the password I just keep saying no so here we go the data the user killer ja product underscore product has a password p-23 dash name which is a pretty strong user password so let's go back so we have two databases killer ja underscore members killer ja underscore products they have no data in them right size zero megabytes and you see now we have two users now i gave the username, the name of product, but it doesn't matter whatever name I decide to give it. It does the name of the user does not have to be the name of the database. It doesn't really matter. So for instance, I'm going to select the product database instead of using the product user account, I'm just going to use Stevan. So we add user to product. So watch this. See when you associate a user account this with a database you have to tell the database what this particular user can do on your database you see there's many different types of things they're called operations that you can uh, you can execute on a mysql database any database really so what you could do is create a user that just is able to read data from particular uh, from a particular database or even from a particular table in the database or you could create another user that can only add records to the database but couldn't delete records for instance so there's really all these different types of privileges that you can assign uh, a user when this user is interacting with a particular database. This is very useful for security reasons. Uh, you know, maybe you know, maybe you got a particular type of web app where you want to be sure that when certain people log in, they can only view the data and not alter the data. But generally speaking, when it comes to general database interaction, you want to create a super user that's able to do everything. So what you just do, instead of having to select these individually, I just select all privileges. So this essentially will make killer ja underscore Stefan, this user, when it comes to working with this database, they'll be able to do everything.
So I'm just going to say make changes. So it tells us right here, killerja underscore Stefan was added to the database, killerja underscore products. And we know that they got complete power. So there you go. So now in our current databases list, it lists the, uh, the database and the user associated with that database. So if we click through, it gives us some basic details here. Nothing to get excited about. And here we go. It expands as I thought it was going to do. And now we could go in there and change some of the permissions if we wanted to. Remove, etc. So I'm just going to go back because we don't want to change anything. And let's actually associate a user with this members database. You know what? I think Stefan, killerja underscore Stefan is a pretty reliable guy reliable user. So we're going to assign him to that database as well. So we'll assign him to members. So we go add. But this guy, I just want him to be able to uh, look at records, select them. I don't want him to be able to lead. Uh, I don't want him to be able to insert. Uh, we'll do show view and uh, make changes. And there you go. So I've added Killer J Stefan to the database Killer Members. We go member, well, Killer J Members. So as you can see here, we've added our member, or excuse me, our users to our database. Let's give Stefan, let's give, um, excuse me, let's give Killer J A products access to the products database as well. So go add. And let's give this guy all privileges, make changes. All right, here's the usual message. We're used to that by now. As you can see in our current databases table, killer products or killer ja underscore products now has two users. You got Stefan user and the product user. So uh, I'm just not saying killer ja underscore just to save time. So you get the idea. That's how you create a database with MySQL. At create users, add users, change the permissions on uh, the database with regards to the user. You understand you can sign uh, multiple users or no users to a particular database. So it's pretty powerful stuff. And uh, this is using cPanel, although the principles are, of course, 100% the same, whether you use cPanel, Plesk, or any other interface that you can uh, you know that you have available to interact with MySQL or any other relational database. Of course, MySQL is a type of database, a relational database, and they all work pretty much the same way, although there are nuances and differences depending on the particular database. Uh, whether it be MySQL in terms of how it's configured by the admins, or whether you use uh, SQL Server or, or whatever database that is out there. I hope you found this interesting. It certainly wasn't for me. No, I'm just kidding. It's pretty cool. All right, ciao.